So for every, everyone who doesn't know me, my name's Indy, and I'm thrilled to welcome each and every one of you who are joining us tonight. We are here for a very special reason, to introduce our first deal. And who better to present this to you than our guiding force behind our mission, our CEO, Ian Lowe. Ian will be leading us through the session for about half an hour. I can assure you that you're going to be jam-packed with insights and exciting updates about this new chapter in our journey. We understand that this is a big deal, literally, and we expect that you'll have a tons of questions. But to keep things flowing smoothly tonight and to respect everyone's time, we've dedicated a separate session next week to cater to your queries. This will be a special AMA on Telegram on the 25th of July where Ian will dive into your deeper questions. It's going to be interactive, informative, and of course, incredibly exciting. So start noting down those questions. So without further ado, I'll pass it on to Ian. Over to you, Ian. Thank you, Indy. Uh, welcome, everybody. Well, look, it, it feels like uh, this, this session, this webinar has been an awfully long time coming. And I'm sure many of you would agree with that. But look, what we want to share today is uh, we think really, really exciting. And we certainly uh, hope you feel the same way. Um, as Indy said, we won't take Q&A, but we've set up a whole dedicated session to dive into all of your questions. Um, and we'll talk more about how you can get those questions to us in advance at the end of the webinar. OK, so why don't we get started? Indy, if you're happy to do a page, the page turn for me. Um, so this is the standard disclaimer. We're not providing uh, financial advice. We're not providing investment advice. I think everyone's familiar with all of that. So we'll just keep moving. Okay, so look, many, many of you have been on this journey with us for, for some period of time, and I just want to restart, restate right, right from the, the outset of this webinar, that what we are doing is actually, has never been done before, okay? And it's, it's not so much a disruptive proposition, that, we're, that we've built and that we're taking to market. This is actually revolutionary without being disruptive. Our, our role and the purpose of Daxi Chain is to provide all of the existing equity crowdfunding platforms in the world today that operate in licensed or regulated markets to offer them the opportunity to become global through our network and our technology achieves that for them. So this is absolutely revolutionary. And all of our supporters, our coin holders, you are absolutely at the center of this. And I'm going to share with you quite a bit more detail today, not just about the first deal, but some other information that, that helps you understand our progress uh, and, and the direction of travel. So I just think from the outset, I wanted to, to make it really clear that what we are doing is genuinely revolutionary and our supporter base is absolutely critical to everything we've achieved so far and, and indeed to our future. So this idea of building the network, uh, a network of licensed equity crowdfunding platforms, most of you will have heard me talk about that for a while now. Uh, growing that network of participating platforms and then growing the deals that flow through that network is what drives demand for Daxi Coin. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this and and delve into it in a little bit more detail. I know that there's a number of people are saying, well, what's happening with Daxi Coin? You know, when's it gonna hit this price and that price? And I'm gonna try and frame that for you today. But I just want to be really clear right again from right right from the outset that it's the building of the underlying business, which specifically means building the network and growing the deals that flow through that network. That is what will drive the demand for DaxiCoin, okay? We're beyond the period of speculation. We've launched the business. Today, we announce our first deal. We've got real partners, real investors on those platforms. We're past all of that speculation. We're now into building the business is what drives the, the value of DaxiCoin, and, and that's through the demand that it creates. 
And the third headline that I wanted to kick off with is that this is really, if we had the benefit of hindsight and, and could have picked anywhere on our journey since 2018 to launch Daxi Chain, I can honestly say we would have picked now, not one year ago, not two years ago, not three years ago. And you might ask the question why. And really there's two primary reasons. The first of that is the market wasn't quite ready for what we're offering three years ago. If we think about the state of crypto markets, if we think about the state of equity crowdfunding as a proposition, um, the, the world wasn't quite ready for the revolution that we're, that we're bringing. And so if we think about market cycles and we think about timing and we think about the adoption curve and the ownership base of crypto and all of these other things that relate to equity crowdfunding, really now is, is absolutely the right time. And I can honestly say that. And, and the second reason is that the period of time that we've had while the market wasn't quite ready, we've actually made some really important refinements to our business model and to our technology platform. Really important that make it much more scalable, which means we can grow much faster. So I think all things considered, if I think about the quality of the model, the quality of the platform, and the market cycles in which we bring our revolution to the world, now is fundamentally a really great time to be doing that. And that's um, something that I'm always looking at in terms of the timing. You know, having the best idea and the best people and the best solution doesn't always translate to stunning success because sometimes your timing is not right. But I can honestly say I think our timing is is um, absolutely spot on, albeit later than we originally intended. Okay. Um, oh, is my camera off? Was my camera off? If so, I apologise. I thought it was on. Okay. So let's move on to the next. Let's move on to the next slide. That's just a couple of key points I wanted to to touch on. So, look again. This is something that you, you've heard us. Uh, I apologise, everybody. It keeps turning my camera off. Um, so I'll just try and keep an eye on that. Um, you've heard me talk before about the different stages of the development of the Daxi Chain business and the and the platform and the the proposition generally. So. I'm just going to cover this very quickly. R really fundamental and a, and a good way to think about what we're doing is there's three layers to the technology itself, okay? Now, the way to think about these three layers, the transaction layer that sits in the middle is like the engine that sits in the car, all right? It's under the bonnet. You can't necessarily see it. The user of the car doesn't see the engine working. But the engine and all of the mechanical um, magic that goes on under the bonnet is absolutely critical for the, for the smooth functioning of the vehicle, okay? And so the transaction layer is our engine. That's where we're managing a whole bunch of very complicated things, and I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a moment. And there's a huge amount of complexity in that transaction layer, which nobody sees, which is exactly the way it should be, okay? The application layer, this is the layer that all of our partners see. This is how they release deals to the network. This is how they accept deals from other partners in the network. This is how they see the status of those deals. Um, and it also includes an API framework so that all of these equity crowdfunding partners can connect with each other through our infrastructure. So the application layer is like the body of the car, okay? It's the interface. Um, and so, as you would expect, that user experience inside the, the application layer is really, really important. But stage one is really where we're focused just on the transaction layer and the application layer, okay? This is where we sign multiple partners, they're collaborating via the platform, and we prove the application layer. We prove that that interface that all of the partners are using works exactly as intended and that partners can achieve the things they need to achieve through the technology using that interface, okay? And all the hard work is going on underneath in the transaction layer. Stage two is about growing the network, 
okay? So more partners starting to get a steady trickle of deal flow coming through the network. And um, this is also the point where we'll start to look at tokenization and custody. So just to be very, very clear, the first deal that we're putting through is not tokenized. I'll cover more detail on that in a moment. Tokenization is coming very, very soon. Um, a lot of the work has been done. But we've made the decision that we want to strip out as much complexity as we go to market in these early stages as we possibly can. So just to be very clear, tokenization is hardwired into our platform. It won't be part of the first deal, but it will be shortly after. Okay. Stage three is where we have get into an accelerated phase of growth for the network and the deals that are flowing through the network. So we've now got a steady flow of deals. And it's really where we start to look at versions two uh, for both the application and the transaction layers. Okay. That's really important. And we've, we've already got a really good idea on what we want to do there. But of course, our experience in stage one and two will also greatly inform those um, updated versions of, of those two layers. And then stage four is where we've got a network with real scale. And that's when we look at launching our blockchain layer. Okay. And so just keep in mind the, the blockchain layer uh, will be purpose designed and built to exactly what we need it to achieve. But of course, in the meantime, with the tokenization, we can de risk the whole proposition by using established blockchain technology, which has absolutely no difference to any of the participants, while we refine the uh, design and build of our own blockchain layer. So I want to be really clear, we are pursuing our own blockchain layer, but we will, we will be using established blockchain technology in the short term to, re to reduce the risk profile of the total project, okay? There's a lot of moving parts, and this is exactly the way that we should be doing it, uh, taking a modular approach, getting the critical components out first, proving that they operate as they should, and then taking a modular approach to other components as we go. So hopefully all of that's somewhat clear. If you've got any questions on the nitty gritty, I can bore you with the answers when we do the AMA um, in due course. Thanks, Indy. So if we, go to the, if we go to the next slide, so this is obviously the same graphic of those, those three layers that, that, that essentially make the Daxi chain stack. I just want to make the point that the complexity that sits in the application layer, that's the hard work that we've been doing over the last few years, okay? And this is a world that we now, as a result, we know incredibly well. It's all the things you can see in the bullet points here on this slide, crypto payments, tokenization, KYC, it's digital wallets and custody, smart contracts, secondary exchange transactions, which start to get quite complicated from a purely technology perspective, um, you know, security uh, regulations, which are slightly different in different markets, uh, internationalization, which is about currencies and languages and, 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 and taking account of different cultures, a whole bunch of different things. So all of that complexity is already baked into the transaction layer, that engine room that no one sees, but it's doing all of the hard work under the surface, okay? So, um, one of the questions that I get asked sometimes is, well, I know you guys have been busy. What have you been doing? This is a big part of what we've been doing is building out this transaction layer so that when our partners um, are using the application layer, everything just works really smoothly. Okay. It's a really important way to, for us to be thinking about how we bring this to market. Okay. Thank you, Indy. So if we move on, I wanted to take a few minutes just to explain all of that. Um, now we get to um, uh, something I'm sure you've all been uh, really looking forward to hearing more about. And, and so we're going to share all of that with you right now. So if we can just go to the, the next slide, please, Indy. So look, given a whole bunch of factors, what we've decided is it makes enormous sense for the first deal that's funded through Daxi Chain to actually, actually be Daxi Chain. In other words, for ourselves. Okay, and there's a number of reasons why after careful consideration, we've decided to do this, okay? The first is that I can't think of a better way to prove the technology and the model than to actually put our hand up and say, we are going to be the first organization 
to, to uh, conduct a successful equity crowdfunding round through these pipes, all right? Um, we're, we're very much leading from the front. The second is that um, we get an enormous number of insights as both the tech provider and also the company raising the investment. In other words, we're fulfilling both of those roles rather than just being the network and the tech provider. It gives us a lot of insights that we can use to quickly refine and improve the technology. Um, and that's a really important part of our continued commitment to our partners is that where we start with this technology is not where we finish. We're constantly making adjustments. Any of you that have had exposure to software companies are familiar with this expression that the product is never built. And that's exactly what it's like, okay? We understand the functionality we need to release. We've built that. We know it works. We prove it through the first deal. And then we, we take the learnings from that and we iterate the technology rapidly. Um, and so, as a, again, as both the company raising the funds and the provider of the technology, it's a smart way for us to accelerate those insights. I think the final point is, you know, we've talked the talk and this walk the walk really appeals to us culturally. This idea that, okay, why, we're not going to ask somebody else to, you know, to be the first deal. We're going to do it ourselves and we're going to show the world through our confidence uh, and through the successful execution of this first deal exactly what this technology can do. So we think that's a very powerful statement to our supporters and a powerful statement to the world as it relates to this revolution that that we're that we're bringing. Really interestingly, and I've, I've dropped this point in because I thought you'd like to know this, um, an equity crowdfunding platform using their own platform um, to raise capital has been done before, not once or twice, but a number of times. And most recently, uh, a US-based company called Start Engine uh, announced that they're doing a capital raising of up to 46 million US dollars. Um, and uh, that capital raising is in process. I think they've already raised 16 or 17 million since it was announced. Interestingly, this equity crowdfunding platform in the US has revenues of 24 US $24 million a year in 2022. And they've got a valuation for this capital raising of 1.32 billion US dollars. So what's interesting about that to us is it shows that a very relevant, very contemporary example of an equity crowdfunding technology provider using their own technology to raise capital for themselves has, has delivered a valuation of 55 times revenue, which for anyone who's familiar with valuation models is at the spectacular end of the spectrum, okay? So we know that equity crowdfunding technology providers are very highly valued by investors and much sought after. And so I just want to provide that to give everyone a degree of comfort by helping you understand that this is not the first time this approach has been taken. And a very recent example, we can see an incredibly powerful um, valuation. So if we just keep moving, I've got a few things I want to get through to give you some more detail on all of this. So the first thing you need to know is that the target amount that we're going to raise is 500,000 Australian dollars. So um, that's give or take a um, little, little bit less than half that in pounds sterling. Um, the pre-investment valuation, so that's the valuation of the business before we take this investment is 9 million Australian dollars and the valuation post-investment is obviously 9.5 million. The difference between the two being the 500,000 of investment that we secure. So relative to other technology providers in the space, this is what, what could be described as an extremely modest uh, valuation. Uh, the new investors or the new shareholders that are the investors on this deal will own 5.26% of the total company at the end of the, the capital raising. Um, and I just want to make the point, we have 1 billion Daxi coins on the balance sheet. So what that means is that 98% of the valuation that we're ascribing to this deal is already sitting on the balance sheet in the form of Daxi coin. 
okay? So when we talk about it being a modest valuation, um, I, I think it's overwhelmingly, unambiguously, um, a very, very arguably ridiculous um, valuation when you look at some of the others in the space. Now, the question I'm sure a lot of you will be asking is, well, look, why, why, why would you need to raise uh, funds at all? And I just want to make the point again, this is probably more about for us proving the model by leading from the front than it is about raising the capital, okay? Having said that, we are going to put that money to work and we're going to do it um, to basically accelerate. So I've got three points here. Accelerate the growth of the network. That's really about sales and marketing. The second is to accelerate the product development. That's about more developers developing more features so we can, we can release those more rapidly. The third point is the critical point. We are first mover, so we have a natural first mover advantage, okay? And the best way for us to defend that first mover advantage is to move at high velocity. And so for us, what we mean by high velocity is over this next 12 to 18 months, this is a critical window for Daxi Chain to go out and sign all of the equity crowdfunding partners in all of the markets that are important to us to build a barricade, build a moat around this business by locking in all of those equity crowdfunding platforms. We think that is absolutely critical. And we think that having done that 12 to 18 months from now, the strength of the business on an ongoing basis is guaranteed. Okay. So this is, again, this is straight out of the playbook. This is the way that you build, the way that you pioneer a technology and take it to market is that once you've proven the model works, once you've proven the technology works, you really need to move quickly. And so this modest amount of capital will be put to work to run faster, which really means sales and marketing people in activity and developers to build features faster than we can at our current um, development rate. Okay, so that's that's where the where the where the where the investment will be put to work. Just another data point to put this in context. So we know that the average investment from somebody that invests through equity crowdfunding is about US one thousand dollars, which is nearly one and a half thousand Australian dollars, obviously less than a thousand pounds. So we're really talking about three hundred and fifty investors. We have a community of over twenty thousand across the world so um, again in terms of being able to fulfill this equity crowdfunding um, target we're very very confident and you know we expect a really strong response and i'll um, i'll be encouraging all of you to uh, get involved um, very shortly as we go through the, the presentation thank you indy um, i'm sure there'll be questions about that again i'm happy to handle those in the ama so I just want to share with you the time frame. This is really important. So as we sit here today, we've announced our first deal. Um, we're leading from the front. The first deal is for Daxi Chain itself. Oh, I, there will be a window that opens on the 21st of August, okay? Um, and on the 21st of August, we will essentially, through the network, we will start to take expressions of interest. Um, and then that turns into the actual official investment window opening on the 4th of September. Okay, and that's open for a few weeks, closes on the 29th of September. So there's essentially a um, about a four week period in which uh, people uh, are able to invest, but there's a, an expressions of interest period that, that precedes that, which is very normal in equity crowdfunding. Almost every deal on almost every platform has an expressions of interest period up front so that the platform can start to gauge the interest and respond to any of the questions that are coming through before the investment window officially opens, okay? We're gonna share lots more information about this. Um, remember that the way that investors participate is through our partner platforms, okay? You don't come to Daxi Chain. We are not an equity crowdfunding platform. We are the technology provider that connects all of the partners in our network. And so it's through those partners that investors will participate. Okay, thanks, Indy. Let's let's keep rolling through. Um, so I think you know this was. I think this is important. Um, we're you know we're asking for people to 
to advocate for what we're doing and and to get involved and and to whatever extent that you can or you you you're willing to is to support this first deal but the real question of course is well why should you do that um so let me share a couple of points really quickly i've already covered this idea of we are the we are the first mover we're first to market so in terms of this being a sound investment you know forget forget the the loyalty and the patience and all of the um, goodwill that's been invested by our community. Why is this actually a good investment? We're doing something new. We're the first to market, which means we have a natural first mover advantage. Okay. The cost model under this business is a low cost B2B model. Okay. We do not have large variable cost of sale. It's essentially close to zero and it's almost entirely fixed. So what that means is this business will scale very elegantly in terms of producing profits over time, okay? Um, we talk about this being a global network, extracting income out of that global network. That is a business model that typically attracts premium valuations, okay? So um, when investors such as venture capital look to different business models, this global network income from across this global network is a highly attractive model um, because of its scalability and its margins. Um, I point again to the start engine valuation. I think what that shows is that as we grow the business, it's a very top end of the spectrum valuation that really is achievable for us. Um, and there's plenty of, plenty of evidence to support that. Um, we've talked previously about the network effect um, and the speed to market, that's how we win. And I've already talked about how signing lots of partners over this next 12 month period creates a moat, makes it almost impossible for competitors to come in and try and do the same thing. Um, uh, the balance sheet uh, with the backing of the 1 billion Daxi coin, which um, ascribes a close to zero valuation to the actual technology, which we believe is truly ridiculous. So we think the numbers really stack up. I just want to make it clear any investors that participate receive ordinary shares. They will have equal voting rights with every single other shareholder, okay? There's no preference shares. Founders aren't getting special treatment. Everyone that owns shares sits around the table as an equal and has equal voting rights. Um, that's, that's always been really important for us. Um, and of course, the other thing is any investment helps us prove the model and the technology because this is the first deal and we do not and I want to be clear about this, we do not anticipate offering further equity investment windows down the track, okay? We believe we just don't need to, okay? So I just want to be clear about that as well. All right, thank you, Indy. We'll keep moving. Um, how do you participate? I won't go into the nitty gritty here too much. We've talked about our previous partners, Equitize, Snowball Effect. It's through these partners that individuals will participate we're gonna share with everybody um, a lot of information about exactly how you can get involved. You've seen the timeline, so we've got a little bit of time to share all that with everybody, uh, answer questions, et cetera, et cetera. I do wanna make a point, which is that we are in the advanced stages of discussion with a UK-based partner, okay? Advanced stages. So um, I'm expecting that I'll have more to say very soon with all of you uh, about that. So that's that's obviously really exciting. Um, part of what we're gonna share in the, the information that follows is obviously how you register, um, depending on where you are and in, in the world, which platform is most appropriate. All, all of that information will be shared as well as really comprehensive information on the company, um, which is called the offer document. So it's a little bit like a prospectus, but not quite as hard to wade through. It's like a, 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 a simplified version of a prospectus where we tell you all about the company, the share table and the staff and the, the technology and the financial history and all of that sort of stuff is all in the offer document. Okay, so all of that will be shared. Uh, it's another reason why we liked being the first deal because it, it introduces a degree of transparency to our supporters. We think that's, we think that's um, warranted. Okay, uh, if we keep moving, through. Um, I want to talk very quickly about DaxiCoin. There's always lots of questions about DaxiCoin um, and it's totally understandable. What's happening with the coin? 
when you know when's the price going to hit this number and this number and you know what's the time frame all, all of this type of thing so let's let's dive into a couple of slides here on daxicoin so the first thing i want to say is really restating what i said at the outset which is that the growth of the underlying business the growth of daxi chain is what drives demand for the daxi coin and the reason that's important is because the growth in the demand for DaxiCoin is what fundamentally drives the value of DaxiCoin. Okay, so if we go back to basics here, DaxiChain is a tech platform. We allow regulated, licensed equity crowdfunding platforms anywhere in the world to connect with each other through our pipes. Okay, by doing this, we are creating global crowds of investors that are available to local platforms and local deals. Never been done before, okay? That's the revolution that I've been talking about. Creating this world's first equity crowdfunding network completely reimagines the scale of what crowdfunding can achieve in what we call the innovation economy. This is the funding of innovation, okay? And the growth of Daxi Chain, more partners, more deals, is what will drive the demand for DaxiCoin. So let's keep going because I've got a few more points I want to share on this. Okay. Um, so the first is, and this is something that some of you will have seen me present previously, um, we believe that uh, Daxi Chain transforms equity crowdfunding into a market that could be valued at $100 billion a year or more. Okay. So if you think about what Daxi Chain is doing, is it's opening up new markets that aren't otherwise viable because they don't have large enough investor pools. But they've also got lots of innovation that's looking to be funded. So if you've got a global network of investor, investors, you can take a global view of funding innovation. So that opens up a whole bunch of new markets. We look at that and we say, okay, very conservatively, there's probably 100 million investors globally that have the capacity to invest in something like equity crowdfunding at 100,000 um, deals a year at 1 million average um, uh, uh, value per deal, we get to 100 billion. These are very conservative numbers. Clearly, it's not going to happen in a week. Um, we've got to build the business brick by brick. But if we look at the size of the market opportunity, it justifies all of the hard work and all of the investment. It truly does. Okay. Now, DaxiCoin is the transaction currency that powers the network. All right. We've talked about this before. So when an investor invests in their local fiat. They have to be able to invest in their local fiat. Otherwise, we close out too many of those investors. Okay. And the company that's raising the capital wants to get it in their local fiat, their local currency. We use Daxi coin in the middle as a transaction currency. Okay. To convert uh, investment in one market in one currency to capital in another market in another currency. And that might sound like something that's relatively easy, but if you think about over time being in 50 countries with maybe 40 currencies, the pairs that you've got to create is 40 squared, which is a big number, right? So DaxiCoin solves all of those problems and it solves it very, very elegantly. And it's purpose designed to solve this problem inside this network, okay? So you're gonna hear me talk about this again in the future. DaxiCoin is a transaction currency. Now, one of the reasons that's important is that four of the top 606 cryptocurrencies in the world today by market value are transaction currencies, okay? The premium valuations on crypto are being ascribed to transaction currencies, okay? So that's a very, very important point. I can assure you, none of this is lost on us. It's not a happy coincidence. This is the path that we have plotted right from the beginning. Okay, let's keep moving. I've got a few more slides that I wanna share. Um, this is sort of a bit revisionist, so I'll zoom through it. Equity crowdfunding today, uh, on a single platform, you've got investors, that's called demand, and you've got companies raising capital, and that's called supply. And they transact with each other through a single platform, okay? They're not venturing outside of that platform. And of course, that means it's local. It's local investor pools, it's local companies looking to raise capital, and it's local in each market, which means it doesn't have the scale. The way these platforms make money is they take a small percentage of the capital that they raise. Typically, it's in the range of 5 to 
and typically, and the, the, the range is enormous, but each local equity crowdfunding platform has somewhere between a sort of a dozen and a hundred deals a year, and they've got 10,000 plus investors. Um, some of the larger ones have many more than that. Okay, so that's that sort of present state. If we keep moving, what we're doing is we're creating the network effect by connecting all these platforms and allowing the crowd from any platform to invest in any deal on any other platform. Okay, and the way that works is the Daxi chain that connects uh, the Daxi chain network that connects all of these platforms allows them to share deals with each other and allows the crowd in any of those participating platforms to invest in deals through their local licensed platform, but that local licensed platform may not have sourced the deal from the very beginning. It might come from one of the other partners in the network. Okay, so the model itself is simple, but this network effect is incredibly powerful because as we build the network, it will deliver compound growth. Compound growth in deal flow, compound growth in uh, the value of of funds invested by investors, okay? And compound growth, of course, in the size of the investment community that we're building across the world. I've made the point that it makes equity crowdfunding viable in new markets where it's not viable today by making it global. We all know that tokenization is hardwired into this, this mission, so that hasn't changed. And just to be clear, I've, I've said it before again, we are not an equity crowdfunding platform. We are an infrastructure that connects existing licensed equity crowdfunding platforms okay so let's keep moving um the primary use case for daxi coin is as a transactional currency to move investments globally between investors and issuers issuers just simply means growth companies raising capital okay they're issuing shares in return for that investment but there are secondary uses and these are things that we are working on in the background okay Blockchain currency for the Daxi blockchain, global trading on a future Daxi secondary market. Um, we are also looking at, at some point in the future, you can't do it today, possibly being able to use Daxi coin as a currency for investment. Okay. Today, it's a transactional currency, and that is its primary use case. That's not going to change. In the future, we may also open the door to it becoming an investment currency. Okay, um, so that's something that we will we will look very seriously at as the business progresses. But the primary use case, the one that drives the valuations of four of the top six cryptocurrencies in the world today, is as a transactional currency. These next points are important. Daxi coin will be used. Sorry, Indy, if we just go back, I just want to these bullet points. I want to cover them really quickly. Daxi coin will be used in every single equity crowdfunding deal on our network no exceptions I want to be crystal clear about that daxi coin will be used for this first deal for daxi chain itself okay I want to be really crystal clear about that this first deal fully validates fully validates the use case the primary use case of daxi coin unambiguously okay and i've already covered off that at this stage of our journey you can't invest daxi coin in return for equity we can't create too much friction this early on in the evolution of the business. So we have to make it that people invest in local fiat in the same way that the issuer needs to receive local fiat, okay? So hopefully some of that is making sense. Again, I'm sure some of you will have questions. Um, please send those through. We'll, at the end, we'll tell you how to do that. And we're get, gonna dive into as many of those as we can in as much detail as time permits in a dedicated AMA session. All right. Sorry, Indy, if we keep going. Um, hang in there, everybody. We're almost done. Uh, this is really just, again, restating what was on slide one. The value of Daxi coin has three primary drivers. Now, if you look at this list, it doesn't say speculation. We're past speculation. We are now in the stage of the business being a reality. We've got real partners with real investors. We've got deals going through. The technology is built. Okay. So what drives the value of DaxiCoin is the growth of the network. So these are the things we'll be talking to you about. The number of platforms that are plugged into the network, okay? How do you judge our progress? How many partners have we got? How is that changing over time? That's number one. The second is as the number of partners grows, 
the number of deals that are funded through the network will grow too. So the growth in the number of deals and obviously the value of those on an aggregate basis is another way that you can understand our progress. We're going to be talking about all of this. We're going to be sharing all of this with you, okay? And the third way that's unrelated to the underlying business, um, at least directly, that we drive the value of DaxiCoin is with a listing on a tier one exchange. Now, how do we get a listing on a tier one exchange? I can tell you it's jolly difficult. Um, it, it takes a long time. There's an enormous number of hoops you've got to jump through. Um, and we've been well down a path for a little while now. But how do you actually, how do you actually achieve that? You build the underlying business. You build the underlying demand for Daxi coin. So what I'm what I'm trying to communicate here is everything comes back to these first two points. These first two points will drive demand for the Daxi coin, and correspondingly, will make a listing on a tier one exchange very very easy for us. Okay, as the demand grows. So this this is how. Everybody that holds Daxi coin, I'm trying to be really clear about the path and how to think about our progress and how to think about the um, creation and the sharing of the value of the business through Daxi coin. This is the path that we're on. Now, I also want to be clear, it is crystal clear in the minds of the people in the business exactly what targets we need to hit, what milestones we need to achieve in order to drive the value of the Daxi coin. And that's why I'm sharing this with you here, okay? These are all the things we talk about internally every day. Um, okay, I've probably talked uh, enough on that slide. And a summary. So look, this, this is a journey that, that started as early as 2017 with an idea that became a vision that then became DaxiCoin and a whole lot of hard work since then. Um, what I'm trying to do here with all of you is to share just enough detail to help you understand what we're doing, how we're doing it, and the result we think that that will get us over time, the different stages that um, we're bringing into our planning and our doing. Without boring you with so much detail, you get confused. The idea is I'm, I'm trying to share enough so that everybody understands the direction of travel, the things that are important to us. And these are the same things that we'll be updating you on as the business grows and as we progress. Um, today, we announced the first deal. I, I can't tell you how exciting that is for all of us internally, Just um, not just announcing the first deal, but to put ourselves out there and say, you know what, we're, get, we're gonna lead with our chin on this because we really have total confidence in what we're doing. Um, that actually does also present a unique opportunity um, for everyone to um, have a little piece of the business and participate in the value creation. Uh, those investors have equal voting rights. I've already talked about that. I've talked about the valuation of equity crowdfunding technology providers with Start Engine, um, which when you take um, you know, the projections that we will share in our offer document, when you look at those and you start to apply these same multiples, I think the outcome for investors is potentially spectacular. And I can assure you that this is absolutely um, the same horizon that we have our own eyes set on inside the business. The primary use case for DaxiCoin has not changed. We are a purpose-built transaction currency that is the fuel in the Daxi chain network, okay? Moving investments around the world. Um, expressions of interest on the first deal will open the 21st of August. We're going to give you a lot more information um, about how you can get involved if you'd like to get involved. And obviously, we'd really love all of your support. Um, lots more information will be forthcoming on that very soon. So um, thanks for bearing with me. Um, I've gone a few minutes longer than I planned to, um, which those of you that know me know that I'm prone to do that sometimes. Um, I think we've got a have we got a video here, Indy? We do, we do. Great, thank you. One moment, everyone. So after six years of tireless work and dedication, Daxi Chain has become a reality. It's a testament to the power of innovation, and it's only the beginning. 
It's the world's first global equity crowdfunding network. Now it's time for the next chapter in the Daxi Chain story, our first deal. I'm thrilled to share that the first ever deal through the Daxi Chain network is none other than Daxi Chain itself. We've talked the talk and now we're walking the walk. We are literally taking the first bold steps in a new era of crowdfunding. Let's talk about why this matters, not just to us, but to you, the investors. By investing in the Daxi chain, you're not just backing a business. You're helping reshape global investment. You're supporting the democratization of crowdfunding, giving power back to the people and enabling countless innovative ideas to take flight. But the Daxi chain isn't just a blue sky vision. There are on the ground benefits. The Daxi chain gives you access to a global pool of investment opportunities and its blockchain-based system provides unrivaled levels of transparency, liquidity, and security. As we start the next phase of this exciting journey, we invite you to join us. Powered by you, the investors, Daxi Chain is set to reshape crowdfunding and redefine tomorrow. This is Daxi Chain, the future of crowdfunding. Well, I could have got somebody a lot more attractive to do the video, I think, Indy. But um, anyway, um, look, I think uh, I think it's actually a really great video because there is a really strong aspirational dimension to what we're doing here. Right? We actually think we can change the world. We really believe it. And what we've delivered is the technology that enables that. You know, I have the luxury of talking to equity crowdfunding platforms and hearing their response when we explain the vision and seeing it in their eyes. And it is the strongest possible validation of everything we've worked for. So, um, you know, we think the future is incredibly exciting. Um, I think if we've got, I think we've got one closing slide, Indy. Yeah, which is just to say, look, stay tuned. There's actually a lot more that we're going to talk about. There's some really exciting announcements coming. Um, they're not far away. Uh, so we're looking forward to sharing all of that with you. So this is not sort of, you know, the first deal and then you won't hear from us. That's that, that's not the case at all. We're going to be checking in regularly. As we said, there's an AMA coming up. Um, but, you know, sharing the good news so you can understand our progress. It's about understanding our progress. We're going to be very forthcoming about that. Um, and I'm going to be representing all of that myself personally. So we're, we're, we're truly committed to to that level of, of transparency and disclosure. Um, and I think that I think that ends the presentation. Unless I'm mistaken. I think that's it. Yeah, that's us for tonight. And absolutely, Ian. Um, in order to manage everyone's flow of questions, if you guys could just send them through to the following email I'm about to post in this chat, AMA at Daxi.com. We'll, um, we'll review all of them ahead of time just to make sure that we don't have any duplicates and we can answer as many unique questions as possible. Um, so next week, we'll be releasing more information, including the availability of the investor packs, as well as important updates to our website. An email of the recording of this webinar and the introduction video that you've just seen will be dispatched tomorrow. So we encourage you all to share these materials with anyone who might who might be interested in joining our exciting journey. Uh, so thank you for the, your time tonight or this morning, wherever you might be, and being a part of the Dexy community. Um, and stay tuned for future updates. We look forward to answering all your questions. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Ian. Thanks, everybody.